Hello, everybody, and welcome to Angel Middles. I am your hostess, Mama D, also known as Dolly. And my guest this evening is a very amazing young lady, shall we say. Um, she's been my friend for I don't know how long. You just seem to have been there, you know, and, and, and I never questioned it. It's, just, it's like, Jody's there, Jody's there. I see no questions. But tonight we're going to talk about a little bit about many things. But I'm sure that it's just going to very lightly touch everything that Jody White knows and or does. So everybody, say hi to my guest this evening, Jody White. Well, say hey, Jody. Thank you so much for inviting me. Oh, it's a blast to have you. Whenever we have a conversation, it's, 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 it's fun. So I said, okay, let's get her on camera. Let's get her. She's going to be my guest. So tell everybody a little bit about you. Oh, my goodness. It's good about me. Now, in one way or another, I've been working with years or more. Just had my 73rd birthday on February. And... In the last, your sound is breaking, Jody. Your sound is yeah. breaking. I'm sweetheart. Should I, I don't do know why. that? Unless you have headphones. Plugged in. Hmm. No, but I mean with, with the microphone. Built into the computer. I'm on a laptop. Okay. All right. Let's try. Let's keep trying. Let's keep trying. I'm not going to argue with you. Is it better now? Yep. Okay. Um, so, in the last so, seven years, uh, my abilities as a medium, as a psychic, healer, oh my gosh, so many different things have blossomed and grown. <coughs> And I, I work now um, both at spiritualistonline.com, go over there, sessions. But I also have a, a private practice, and I work with individuals, sometimes on Skype, sometimes day, in person, one to one. Um, you know, like many of you, I do. One thing that I do is that, and out of that, your sound is getting choppy again. Oh dear! What I do? I don't know. It's it doesn't have to be something you're doing. It could just be. Do you have any other windows open that in your? Yeah, computer. That doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And everything else. And Skype. With heresy, I never go on Skype. <laughs> Oh. As Scott yeah. says, maybe it's spirit acting up. Well, Eric's not here, so it can't be Teddy. Yeah. Uh, evergreen. That's pretty funny. Um, yeah, my main guide is A.A. Um, a. A. Michael. He's been with me since birth. And uh, he's not usually a trickster, but I do have others who... We like to mess around. So, hang on a second. See, there you go, Lindsay. Okay. Nice. <laughs> All right. Um, really? Much better? Okay, well. I'm asking. They need to behave themselves up there. <laughs> so, 
among other things, I'm also a writer and have developed something called co-creating, co-created writing, which is not at all channeled um, or planned. An actual collaborative writing process is with A.A. Michael, actually, writing guide. And I teach people how to do that. I am in the final rows of getting my poetry book in final shape so that I can publish. I hope it will be ready for publication. I hope it will actually be in my hands by the beginning of June. That's a thumbnail about you. Okay, I'm going to say hi to everybody who just popped in. We have hey. Christy Who, here's my girl. And we have Long Timothy A. And we have Simon. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so are you all? Let's, let's, let's get down to some business here. Jody White Wolf. Where did the name White Wolf come from? Uh, nice story. Um, in the mid sixties, um, I had a very dear friend who was the how do I describe? It? Anyway, Howard was really good friends with the man who wrote Evan Arrow. Name is so he Chuck form, and I had a dream vision that I had told Howard about, and Howard told Chuck Storm about it. And after talking those two back and forth, Howard came back to me and he said, I "Would like to give you with the name White Wolf," and according to the Uh, philosophy, Howard, or his tree, of white is from the north, and it has Jody, it seems that when you back away from the computer, your your sound goes a little off. Right? Let's uh, try this. Try that. Is that better? Yep. That's not so good. Okay. Um, so... The white, which is the color of the north, has to do with being a teacher and has to do with spiritual philosophy, teaching spiritually. And the wolf part was from my vision. And so it's that the wolf is very protective. He um, is um, devoted to family. And over the years, I have come to understand that my family is in essence all animals, birds, fish, humans. So it's a name that I have never fully grown into. And I, I don't think I ever will grow fully into it because it implies being a wise woman, being an elder. The one who is whole, massive thing. But I do aspire to that. Well, I think you have a long time to build, to grow into the name. So we're just not a problem here. We can keep you around until you become. Well, technically you sort of are because, as you said, white wolf, white is the color of, of of the north, and um, I'm I'm in the north now, kidding. <laughs> but you have the the white hair to go white, the white fur. Yep. And yeah, you yeah. are, yeah. There you go. And you, okay. In that case, I'd be the red fox. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I'm not a red fox. Okay. Um. And you do have wisdom, like I said in in my in my Facebook live. You. you the wisdom that you have, I sometimes we sit there and we wonder where the heck did this come from? 
but it's just, it's there. And you are so willing to share it, which is what I find totally awesome. It's called, the, love, that's true, it's called Platinum Blonde. What I love, Darlene, more than almost anything else is knowing that the whole point of having wisdom is access. Word education comes with a duco. That means to draw forth. Mm-hmm. So the whole point of wisdom is to connect with Intuitive inner wisdom that everybody has brought it forth. We're all doing that with each other constantly. That's what it's about. Um, the literature for past life work that's been done constantly. What we hear is there are two things that matter in this. One is learning knowledge, the other is love. <clears throat> That's all there is. That our own evolution, our own it is our own um expanding awareness of ourselves as human beings a part of our we are individualized Bits of all is everything in the I give the name love to the force that binds Oh, you are empty. How interesting. Hmm. Oh, that's, I guess, good. So, yeah, wisdom. You know, it's really, it's really pretty simple. I'm not doing anything really that different. What everybody in here is doing is one possible exception. And I don't know almost all of you well enough to know where you are on this continuum. That is that I focus my moment-to-moment living testing highest that I have and that I am in every single moment. And I have a guide who Evergreen knows well. Um, his name is M. Hira. A-M-S-E-R-A. And he's a big, huge Middle Eastern guy. Looks like a, a Syrian Buddha. And he is very, very funny. And M. Hira's job, his name came from I am Fear. Because then fear's job is to show me constantly all the myriad of little ways in which I take myself out of experience of universal life. Anything from an eye roll to an uncharitable thought. Constant. Hypersensitized when I do that. To answer as guidance. And so my day to day living is just I know Jody. every moment. Jody, I hate to interrupt. Yeah. Okay. What we're going to try to do is I'm going to stop the recording for a second. Hang on. Let's go. Pause it. Okay. Do you want to try going out and coming back in? Because it's getting sure. the, the, the sound chopping is even a little bit more. So. Sure. I can do that. Well, me, right. please. <laughs> okay. Signing out. All right. Be right back. Bye. And all of this left is me. Oh, I know. It's just me. You guys get tired of seeing just me. Yeah, I know. So that's why I think maybe coming, going back out and coming back in. Um... Long Timothy A. and Simon, how are you enjoying the show so far? You do know the rules of my chat room, don't you, gentlemen? Um, you can't be quiet. You have to interact. The way people get to know you, you get to know people. And, and 
we don't really, okay, maybe except for Scott, nobody here bites. Lindsay, good night, sweetheart. Thank you for coming in. And yes, I'll, I'll send you the link to the archives. We come back in, I guess. Are you hanging around in the keto stuff? I would think they are. Oh, that's right. She knows all about it to a time. Lindsay has a show of her own, so one day you guys could um, go check out Lindsay's show. She's in the UK, so it would be night, Lindsay. So, daytime for you. I will make sure that. Yes, you have a show this Thursday, right? Okay, anybody who wants to, um, I will post a link to Lindsay. Lindsay's show for this Thursday on Facebook, Ramadan, or you can just message me and and no, it's got, it's in Kathy's Distant Echoes. Yes, I think Scott would be a very good guest for you. Mm-hmm. I get to miss this. No, don't shush me. I'll get to miss the show. Okay, hold on a second. Jody, is that you? I hope so. <laughs> okay. Yep, it is. Yay! Okay, let's go. Now, hold on. I'll get back to the recording. And here we go. One, two, one, two. Okay, we're back. See oh, guys. good. Hopefully, is that better sound-wise? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Okay, so you were talking about your, let me see if I got this right, Amphira, your spirit guide, one of your, one of your guides, because I know we have more than one, just one. So. Oh, yes, we do, many. And they, we all have a named guide, we all have a guardian angel, we came in mm-hmm. with those, and then various other guides come in and out as needed. They often form what some people call a choir, or a group, or a uh, there's all sorts of different names to describe a bunch of them that hang out who are, who are um, I call I call mine my dream team. There you go. Yeah, dream team. Yeah. We can call on them for whatever it is we need. Which that's another whole story we can get into about manifestation and how that actually works. Yeah, I mean, wisdom. You all have it. You all already have it. And the blessing is that when we're with people who can access their own wisdom and are open to universe wisdom flowing through them, that triggers to greater wisdom. Mm-hmm. So it isn't really, it's partially me, but it also really isn't me. Here it works. And it's how life works. Real life works. Make any sense? I have no sound, Darlene. No, no, no. There's a guest in the chat room who has no sound. I welcomed him. His name is Jason. And he said, okay. hello, li- nice lady, checking in. And I said, you have no sound. So he can't hear. He can see us but and read the chat room, but he has no sound, so. I got you. Okay. No, we have sound. We are good. Hey, we're good. I love that. So, yeah, thank you for saying that about the wisdom. But I um, can't explain that that's all me. Wish I could, I suppose. From an ego perspective, it would be nice to think. But you know what? It really isn't. Understanding what the universe is bringing and releasing it back out. Now, you have... Whoops. Your sound has gone again. No! Okay, now it's back. (laughs) I just heard you know. (laughs) 
Okay, we're going to have fun with this show. I can see it. I'm sure I'm sure Teddy has something to do with this. Even though Eric's not around, I'm sure Teddy has something to do with this. Now, you also have another god, which you're pretty much well known for, which you will bring back on the show at a later date and time. And um, uh, you will have um, – I haven't decided what I'm going to call it, but you and Archangel Michael – are going to be co-showing, co-guesting, I don't know what you want to call it, on the show with um, Eric Glynn and his adorable uh, guide, Teddy. For lack of a I don't know what to call that. Teddy is special and adorable. So, yes. So, Archangel okay. Michael. Hmm. Archangel Michael, when did you when did you first meet him? And when did... <laughs> Chaos Wilburn. And when did you realize... Who exactly he was? You know, when I was growing up, I know I knew things that other people didn't know, but I knew enough to know that I couldn't walk around telling everybody what I was hearing and what I knew, because I knew that they would think I was slightly warped, or more than slightly, which they may have known <laughs> anyway, but at least they weren't telling me that. Um, I did not know that it was A.A. A. Michael until, I don't know if you know Peg Jones? Yes, Jones. I do. Okay, well, about five, six years ago, I took a basic angel communication class from Peg. And in the course of that, um, Michael made his name known to me. And it was interesting because I was like, I don't even know if I believe in archangels, which made Michael laugh. And he said, hmm, well, guess what? It doesn't matter whether you believe in us or not, we're here, and I've been talking to you for 65, 70 years. Oh, I said, I see. So... I wonder if you use the headphones. I am using headphones, Christy. <laughs> no, no, Christy's saying, um, Christy, it might help a little bit. So yes, go ahead and will. Yeah. It will, yeah. Definitely. Okay, so I'm back to my second. I'm allowed one more screw up. <laughs> it's, my, it's my show, and, and I, know, I know the owner of this show, so we're okay. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> That's good. So, yeah, so about five, six years ago, um, Michael made his name known to me, and not just his name, Michael, but the fact that he was an archangel. And, you know, it's funny. I don't, I don't relate to him as an archangel. Mm -hmm. Just Michael. And... I don't think of him as an archangel, except for one thing, and that is Michael has never had a physical lifetime. So his perspectives are not connected to physical reality. That's one of the reasons why when Eric and Teddy and Michael and I get together. It's so interesting because Teddy and Michael will have the same answers, questions, but how they get there and the way they talk about it is vastly different. Very different. Yeah. I've had conversations with Teddy, so I can just imagine how much different. <laughs> Teddy is totally and truly nuts. <laughs> No, Teddy is adorable. I'm saying that because I'm afraid if I say anything other than that, Teddy's going to come over and dance in my shower. And it's like, no, thank you. No, he's good about that. He does come to visit, though. He periodically shows up here and then goes back and reports to Eric. And Eric will message me and say, oh, you're doing plenty of the eccentric. <laughs> that, that, that's it. <laughs> so that's it, Teddy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I really, in fact, um, Eric and Teddy and I have had many conversations together. 
I have a radio show called Spirit Beavers, and Teddy actually gave me that name. He said that it's interesting that two years ago he said you're going to be developing your own style of reading as a medium, and he said don't let anybody tell you you're doing it wrong or, or take you off course. You're going to do your own thing in your own way. And it, it will happen because you will be weaving together various aspects of spirit. So he gave me that name, Spirit Weaver. Yeah, I have to agree. Um, I made that mistake when I um, when I first came out of the, closet, the spiritual closet. Um, I was doing reading on a Facebook group and. Uh, the person who was in charge of the group invited me to be a reader because I did a reading for her, and she asked, and I said, "Yeah, sure, fine." And then, long story short, she once told at one point she says, "Well, you don't do readings like I do, so I'm gonna have to pull you back from being a reader. But if you take my course and you pass it, you can be a reader on me." I was like, uh, at, at first I was like, "Sure, okay, you know, maybe," and then I was like, "Yeah, I know," but you know. I realized that, that the way I do things, the way I do things, my name is Mom D, it's Darlene. It's not, ah, Jason's got sound. It's not, um, I'm not her. I'm not you. I'm not Jason. I'm not Scott. I do things my way. You know, it's the same as, as healing. You know, I do things my way. That's, I think that is what everybody thinks that when they take a course, become better at mediumship or at reading or whatever they do. They think, well, okay, well, Jody gave me the course and she does it this way, you know, so I have to do it her way. But it, it's like, no, because what what most teachers want is for you to excel in what you do. And that, that exactly, the courses are merely extra tools in our toolbox. And if excelling, excelling means doing it your own way. Picking and choosing what is good for you, and I know you do it that way as well. You know, it's it's not it's not like you turn over a card and it's da, 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 da. you the card is a stepping stone. You know, one of me in the world is plenty. The last <laughs> thing she needs or wants is more than one of me. What spirit needs and wants is one of Scott and one of Darlene and one of Evergreen and one of one of them in here, you know, sure. and any good teacher. Now, I will say this: this is true. There are a whole lot of what Eric calls five-minute mediums, mm -hmm. and I expand that to mean those people who connect to spirit and they think they're a medium, and they, I suppose, in the technical sense, they are, but they have no foundation. They don't understand. Basic. And because of that, their readings are shallow often and as useful as they could be. They don't have the foundation. I'm really interested in making sure that any of my students have that foundation. They know how to open and close. They, um, you know, they. They know how to connect to their guide. They understand that connection happens in an infinite number of ways. They learn how to work with that comfortably. Well, I don't want them doing it the way I do it. I want, you know, if you think of the whole as an uber gigantic, every slice part of the pie. But it's your own individual slice. Mm -hmm. So why would anybody want my slice when you are your own slice? All that matters is developing that and moving with that and growing with that and connecting to spirit and to pull in more and more substance. That to me just seems to make sense. Well, a lot of people think that they have to I was just asked to me today by uh, a new friend, and he says he asked me, he says, "Are you a reader?" And I said, "Well, 
some people would call me that, you know, but I I think I, I'm going if you have to stick me into a box, I'm called a healer. Because I think that even when I do my healing, physical and, and healing, and even when you give your messages, whether they be mediumship, psychic, car reading, pendulum or whatever, you know, tool that you use, it's all a connection to spirit, but you're all healing. You know? Because some people need that um that healing from from the heart, okay, and emotional healing. When 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 a when a medium gives a, a message from a, a past loved one, that sometimes heals something in somebody that needed it. So to me, they're all healers. There's different levels so, of healing. Healing for me is restoration. Or of each of us individually or reconnection with our ability to connect all areas. Anything as Vampira would say ourselves as individualized that needs healing. We are all here on the planet because we have some people call them past life missions. There are lots of words for them. That need healing. That need evolution. evolution. Our personal evolution is a process of so yeah, healing. Healing everything we do, everything we are, is a form of healing. Okay, I'm just catching up with the chat there for a sec. Um, being a medium is a form of healing. Being a psychic is a form of healing. Reading oracle decks, which I do a fair amount of, which great focus tool, is a form of healing. There's everything we do is a form of That's the underlying reason for being on the planet is we not only heal ourselves but in our interaction with others things and we help heal they help heal themselves. Be here. The healing school, I guess. Again, we're having a little issues with the Okay, your eyes and don't watch me, Evergreen. <laughs> <laughs> Just listen. I can't see you. <laughs> Funny, the sound was perfect there. <laughs> I can't talk. If I talk loudly like this, is that better? Yeah, it, do, it does help because it's, I think it is, it, what it is, it's more, Smooth for the for the computer to pick up. Whatever okay. This, okay. I can try talk it. louder. That's good. Hey, there is Christina. Hi, Christina. No, it's Donna Raven. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, hi Donna Raven. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Oh well. Um, use my. Use your reaching to the back. The class voice. Oh, if I did that, I'd blow you right out of the room. I'd have to turn down the volumes. Sorry. Hot flash. Yes. That's it. I can talk loudly. Well, yes, yeah, Simon, you know, um, even when it's not perfect, the fact that we are here, um, we're from all parts of the globe, and we're connecting together, and that's miraculous to me. And it's technology that allows that. And, yeah, sometimes it's not perfect, <laughs> but it's, even when it's half-baked, it's so far better than what, and not being able to do this. This is just yeah. awesome. Well, I am so oh. pleased that, that we can learn to do this. Okay, um, one of the things that I said that we would be talking about on the show is, um, 
uh, unsung heroes. Now, you told me uh, a couple of stories, um, so I'd like you to share them with with, my, with the rest of the with the rest of the class. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. You know, unsung heroes is the name that I give to those ordinary people who do things that are truly extraordinary. Not you in the sense great athletes or great musicians. They offer from their heart in a way that is extraordinary. I'll give you one story. Okay, this is probably the most powerful one I know. A friend of mine was married. This goes back to the Vietnam era. And her husband was killed in Vietnam. His best friend comforted her and spent a lot of time with her. And over time, they fell in love, got married, and had a child. Their relationship was fabulous. One Halloween second husband and the child, the daughter, go out to go trick-or-treating. And they get in the car and they start driving and they are hit by a drunk driver and both of them are killed. Drunk driver is a 17-year-old boy, wakes up in jail, has no memory whatsoever of what has happened, doesn't know why he's there, and is horrified to discover what has happened. Now, this is prior to the days where so-called victims were encouraged to meet with the perpetrators of crime. He says, goes down to the, to the jail, the prison, and says, I want to meet this young man. Very reluctantly, they allowed her to do so. And in the process of that, they begin to talk. She starts visiting him every week. They remain very, they become and then remain very, very good friends. This woman tells me that the reason she did that, because I kept saying, how can you I'm friends with the person who murdered your husband and your daughter. And she says, this young man is a guiding hand so that the death of my husband and my daughter is not meaningless. They died for a reason. And yeah. it is my job follow through on that. When he eventually got out of prison, he went to live with her. He saw him through school, and he is now a doctor. So he's gone from taking life, saving life, because this woman was able to reach inside, offer to him of at a level that most of us would find pretty much impossible. He is an unsung hero. There she is. Truly is. Want another story like that? I collect these stories. Jack Breeze? No. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Here's another story that I also dearly love. Another friend of mine, a woman, was walking in Manhattan, was walking home, <clears throat> took a shortcut that took her in a dark alley. She didn't even think twice about it. A gang of young men, oh, five, six or so, came out at her grabbed her, tied her hands, the, uh, uh, what do you call them? Line folders for the eyes, whatever it is, uh, that, a gag, thank you, Michael, a gag over her mouth, 
bundled her into a vehicle and drove her to the New Jersey flats, which are like a wetland area. They yeah. threw her on the ground. It was quite clear that they had every intention of gang raping her. She looked at them. They had taken the gag off. And she looked at them and she said, this is what you feel you need to be doing. I will participate with you in support of you. And their response was astounding. All of them sat back and said, Oh, my God, is this woman? They ended up getting her dressed, getting her back into the car, driving her to her home, offering her apology after apology, and had changed the lives these young men, because she was able to look onto herself what was really going on with these young men and address She's an unsung hero. Yeah, very true. Um, Scott says there's a program on the telly this evening about the simul Simil- about similar robbery shooting killed her son. She befriended the 14-year-old killer and his family and didn't want revenge. Wanted the boy to grow and learn that he was an, so he could be an asset to, asset to society, not a prisoner fought, not prison fodder and wasted. Yeah, that's very true. A lot of people don't realize that. As much as, as, as the woman who, the 17 year old boy with drunk driver killed her, um, her husband and her child, and yes, if she had just left it at that and was bitter, it would be a waste of their lives, a waste of their death. You know, it's, it's something we all have to learn. This, this woman, major, major strength to her because it's not something that, that's something that I would, not, would, would do, but, you know, you, you never know until it happens. So, yeah. It depends on how far out of your ego you get. How, how much can we individually relinquish our need to be right, to uh, make somebody else wrong, to release our anger at someone or something? Oh. Okay. Good night, Donna. We'll figure this out. Sometimes the the days, the the shows have their moments where, unless the only other way would be is if you called in. Hold on. Let's. let's okay. So let's pause the recording again. Hang on, folks. Okay. okay. Donna, don't don't leave. Don't leave too soon. Oh well. Oh, Lord, no, Brian's here. Lord, help us all. Okay. <laughs> Let me get you the number to call. And it's, an, it's a U.S. number, so it won't cost you. Oh, wait, I've got a call on my phone. Hold on. Let me see if I have enough battery life. Ew, I don't have much battery life. Okay, then. we'll just keep working it this way. Okay. Yeah, see, I knew I should. Hey, Brian. Good to see you. Hello, Brian. It's good not to see you. <laughs> oh, I do. I love you. I miss you. Your sound sometimes breaks up for me, too. But yeah, I'm a psychic. I get it mostly. <laughs> we can read lips. That's what's a good thing about having the video. <laughs> I think if you watch if you watch the green around your um, around your picture, you see your picture. There's a green highlight at the top. If you watch that, if it's lit up, that means people hear you. I think. Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> there you go. 
Well, Scott, like I said to Evergreen, so watch me. <laughs> That's all. <We're> going, <laughs> we 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 are King Kong movies and we are Godzilla movies. Let's <laughs> see. You know, going back to <clears throat> these unsung heroes. Those are very dramatic stories. Truth is, the reason I am so captivated by them is that they are larger than life versions of what each of us does in our better moments. So here's a story out of my own life that illustrates this. My mother she was a piece of work in many ways. And I came to California. Oh, bye, Brian. It's um, I know. Anyway, I went to California for a business meeting, stayed with my parents, and my mother was taking a nap. Shower back right onto their bedroom. I put off taking my shower to avoid waking her. She woke up and I had almost no time. And I said, I'm going to dash into the shower. He said, you can't. I said, why not? Because your sister and her kids are coming. I have to do a laundry. And I don't want to be doing the laundry while they're here. I said to myself, my first blush of what I wanted to say was unprintable. Then I thought, that's absolutely nuts that you would put a laundry as more important than what I came here to do. Something caught me. What I ended up saying was, I totally understand. No problem. I will jump in the shower when you're doing laundry. If the water goes cold, it won't be for that long. I'll be fine. So go ahead. Do what you need to do. It's important. And I meant it. Got in the shower? Interesting. I got out of the shower before she finished sorting the clothes and turning on the laundry. Little tiny story. You all do the same thing when you are coming from that best place in you that makes you an unsung hero. An unsung mm -hmm. hero is when we allow our most Michael, our most angelic expression is where we come from. And in doing that, add the sum total of love that is available for the whole. That's, you know, these stories of these people that are so dramatic just make it more visible. Sound just went. There we go. Uh oh. No, I'm back. Okay. You're back. Yeah, I had to wet my whiskers. You see what I mean by that? Does that make sense to you all? Yes. I'll tell you what, the sound may be working, but my voice isn't. <laughs> so, every time one of us does, and unsung hero behavior, we make it easier for each other person to do the same. It accelerates our own evolution, and that's the name of the game. Oh, there you go.
Okay. Now, one of the things that a lot of people, well, <laughs> whether they're here in the chat room or will be listening in the archives, don't know is that you also are a co-owner of uh, SOC, Spiritual Online Community, I think? Uh, it was originally Spiritualist Open Circle. Well, so there, okay, there you also... Um, you do your your shows as well, but you also do teaching. Um, I should have bad host already. I didn't have the links. I should have had the links for your for this for sock. Oh, the lady behind me. Okay, Evergreen. Uh, the lady behind me in the checkout at the store today had only one item. She was so surprised when I asked her if she would like to go ahead of me. Yeah, people see. It's little things like that. It doesn't have to be big things. People like that, like like Evergreen and, and other people who do little things just to, for no reason, just because, you know. Thank you, Gail. Thank you. You're so, you, you are the good sketchy. Yo, got yourself going. Um, people, now, see, this sort of goes into this another comment I had the other day with a friend. Um, little things. Make one heck of a big difference sometimes to people, and without realizing it, the lady in the checkout line, most people it's just like one thing. Psh, yo, they can still wait. I have to go first. I have to be there first. But in the end, we always end up where we're going to go, where we're supposed to go, when we're supposed to be there. You know, and and sometimes we forget that synchronicities. You know, things happen for a reason. You know, that lady behind you in the line ha was there for a reason. Doesn't have to be that we understand why, but you know. So yeah. You know, when, when you're on a um, an interstate where there are toll booths, I always pay for the person behind me. Always. And I don't know how they feel about it. I don't know what that's done or not done for them or for their day. But mm -hmm. I just always do it because cool thing to do. It says to that person, I recognize you. I see you as being more than just the driver of the car behind me. Those are the things you can do. I have a friend who um, takes $25 in $5 bills. puts each $5 bill and hi Fellini and feels the envelope, and when she's in the supermarket, she, and on the front of the envelope it says, for you. That's what she's written. And wherever she feels prompted, she hands somebody the envelope. Now, she doesn't try to see how they're going to react. She just hands them the envelope. That's an unsung hero. And if you've never seen the movie uh, Play It Forward, or Pay It Forward, rather, that's what this is based on. It's based on the idea that we can offer the best of ourselves moment to moment, and that makes us unsung heroes and touches something very deep inside of people. It lifts them in ways that we can't even begin to understand unless it's us that's happened to. So it's, it's just a marvelous, marvelous way to spend your life looking for being a present to those kinds of opportunities. And they're legion. They are. They're everywhere all the time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Now, I'm going to stray something. Um, and I spoke about it in my Facebook Live video, and because you, I knew that we were going to talk about Unsung Heroes, and um, I've gone to uh, Pal Talk. It's an interesting place. Um, Jeff started me on it. Jeff Lonnie Reagan, Reagan Stags, Raven Stags, that are, oh God, I hope I got her name right. Just kill me. Um, and and I met a, a bunch of new people there, and there was a, there was a young man, um, I believe he's from the UK. And 
he was saying that he uh, helps people from time to time with with monetary. He is able to do that once in a while. And one of his somebody in his circle of friends said that he was weak for showing for the being showing generosity for showing helping somebody who did. and I was like they don't know me who I am or anything and I'm just biting my tongue and I couldn't help it I just had to say the person oh, yeah <laughs> um, the person who said that was somebody who you don't need in your circle because generosity is not a weakness it, as somebody in my Facebook said it's a virtue you know you're you're not just giving and it's not just giving of money but it's giving of like your unsung heroes it's just giving of their time of their 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 emotions their passions their knowledge you know we do it every day you do it every day when your shows and I do it with you with my shows that I think that this is what more people need you know what you, you don't have to sit there and expect the the, the thank you and the da, 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 you know it's it's just something that needs to be done, you know, and oh, each person has their own. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish up that. And each person needs to, in their own right, be generous, you know, and if you can't, it's not, you'd be amazed what generosity you do do, do do, do do, I said do do, um, <laughs> without even realizing it, you know, <laughs> somebody just smiles, you know, like I have, to, I have this uncommonly bizarre habit of constantly smiling at people, even when they don't know. It just, ugh, it is. You know, I do what I do. But, you know, I have some people say, do you know that I look forward to seeing your smile? And I, sometimes I forget that I smile. You know, there's, there's, you know, you, you have people, I love it when I see videos on Facebook about somebody holding a sign saying free hugs. You know, I think that is, I think that's totally awesome. You know, I don't know if I'd do it. If I did, I sure as heck wouldn't do it now because it's, like, way too cold. Don't mind you, that would probably warm a lot of people up, so. Probably so. You know, I want to pick up on something Scott just said, giving with that expectation of a return. Yeah. One of the issues that we all struggle with and are all learning more and more about is letting go of the idea that there is a return, that we are invested in a certain result. Mm-hmm. So as a, say, as a healer, I'm a Reiki master like you are, Darlene, and like you, mm-hmm. I do things in my own way. <clears throat> Learning that healing is not about taking away your pain, your cold, or whatever it is, when I do a healing, I am not attached to a result. I am not doing it because I I want you to feel better and to thank me for it. Yeah. Two prongs. Both my addiction to a certain outcome and it's my expectation that you will respond to me bringing that outcome to you. And in both of those cases, and these come up in ever more subtle ways <laughs> for us to look at and to heal, they also, both of those, take us out of that flow of universal love. Mm-hmm. So it's a very act of trying to take that word. Um, very act of offering healing if there is an attachment to the way that needs to look and the response back to you, you end up not only not healing, but diminishing quantity and the substance of love available to the whole. So we're doing the opposite of what it is. Yeah. It's, uh, when I first started, um, I know Soul Destroyer. Thank you, Donnie, for showing up. He doesn't destroy souls. He just likes to think he does. Um, <laughs> the soft people. Don't tell anybody. Um, one of the things that when I was studying Reiki, uh, and 
And I used to, and I used to, in the beginning, I used to think, oh my gosh, did they get it? Oh my gosh, you know, did did it work? Did it do what it was supposed to, you know? And then my my Reiki master said, it's like it's like playing with a yo-yo when you do that. You send it out, but then you bring it right back in because you're thinking about it again. So I learned that lesson. And when I do send healing, um, I sometimes I'll post a video on my Facebook page, and most people because it's got butterflies in it, and um, they know that that's when I'm sending out healing. I haven't done any in a, this year yet, yet. But uh, you know, but most people I send with that, you know, and that's where they know what's coming. And I have no idea who listens to it. I have no idea who concentrates on it. But I do know that when they do, that they are getting that even if it's just a smidgen, you know, of of healing, they are getting yes, I know. I'm going to you, old boy. <laughs> um, you know, they're getting a smidgen of it, and that's what counts. You know, like I say, um, there might be 20 people who listen to this show in the archives, or and, and only be five here in this show, but it just gets that one person. That one person who, I know, I, I, I just know somebody will get an answer to a question that they haven't figured out yet, you know. The Fellini says, the intent is to send healing. Let the healing go and do its work. That's when you need to get, that's when you need to back off. Yeah, exactly. Well, like, but the thing is, until I was told, I was never, you know, until I was told when I was healing, that's what I was doing. Some people don't realize it. Some people do realize it and they want that payback. They want that, oh, you know, feedback, for lack of a better word. Um, that, you know, when I do get it, it's because it's I, I'm not asking for it, it just happens, you know. But some people don't realize that they're not supposed to wonder. You're just supposed because if everybody, I have to be honest, when I grew up, when somebody offered me something, there was always that string attached. It was something somebody wanted something somewhere, you know. So it it was hard for me to accept compliments, for me to accept feedback. Because or me to accept gifts, you know, of one form or another, because I was always afraid that there was, you know, was a string attached to it. You know, if I say hello to you, uh, you, you know, you offer me, you know, a glass of water. But I've learned, uh, 56 years, I have learned that, you know, it's not everybody wants something in return, and if they do, guess what? You ain't gonna get it because that's not what I'm about. You know, so yeah. Or I will give that because I feel your hunger for it. So it's a gift for me back to you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I'll look at that way. When you know, if we forget often, um, and this is something that I've used for many years. So many of us have had that experience, Charlene. That a gift isn't mm-hmm. really a gift. It's a manipulation, it's there's a string attached. Um, mm-hmm. And what I've said for years is, I, th- I think it's still very true. If I, if you want to give to me, even if I'm uncomfortable in that, my gift to you is to give you the opportunity to give to me. All love is. We all love to give. We have trouble accepting. Mm-hmm. But when we give, and somebody wants to give back, giving doesn't, the cycle doesn't break at that point. Mm-hmm. By accepting their gift, gift we are giving, we're making it possible for them to give. This is what the hunger is. And that keeps the cycle going. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. It does. Because it's that cycle of the energy that fuels the way things work. You know, somebody a little tiny bit ago, somebody said something about um, when we're when we're giving, we want validation or we want feedback, and that some of our attachment to results. Is because we want that validation, we want that 
feedback. And I'd like to suggest something to you. What that tells me is that there is a act of trust in both what spirit is bringing and lack of trust of ourselves. We fully trusted ourselves, fully trusted what spirit brings, we would not need feedback that tells us, yeah, you're on track. Because mm. we would know that. When spirit, it's like when I'm doing a reading, some of you have seen me do this numerous times. When I'm doing a reading and uh, I say blah, blah, and the person says, no, I can't, I, I can't take that. And I say, yeah, you can. <laughs> because I know that spirit has brought it, has given it to me really large, and I know that it's for that person. Inevitably, a hundred percent of the time, they eventually go, "Oh my gosh, of course!" And they've gotten it. Mm -hmm. I trust. I am not swayed by the feedback that somebody gives me that says, "No, that doesn't make sense to me." I trust me, and I trust spirit. Yep. Yes. God, that's true. But sometimes those we help kind of accept that gift until they return something to you because it validates the healing that we do. Yes. Ultimately, what's at issue here is not what others do, it's what we do in ourselves. So it's our motivation, it's what we look for or don't look for. I'm working on a book whose working title is It's Always an Inside Job. If I do a healing with Darlene, she feels it necessary to give something back to me. That doesn't have anything to do with me. It has everything to do with Darlene and what she needs. Oh, it posted you over the day. Okay. So, ultimately, what matters is not what other people do, not what other people say, not what other people think or feel. What matters is I trusting that I am offering from me out that which is of benefit to the whole greatest good of the person I'm with and the greatest good of the whole. And when I feel that that's what I'm doing, I rest content. Mm -hmm. If it's accepted, wonderful. If it's not accepted, that doesn't have anything to do with me. Also means that I can look at how have I presented that. Would there be a different way to present it? That would be easier for the person to. But all things considered, if I feel that I have done the very best I'm able to do in any particular moment or circumstance, most of it is not. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm to be funny. Yes, no, I, one of my things, one of the things I ask about people, one of the things I ask of everybody who comes into my chat room, don't sit back and be a wallflower. Um, pipe in every so often, even if it's silly, because you never know. Like I said, soul destroyer, not just being funny. Then he apologizes and want to interrupt. And I introduced him to Scott, who also likes to be trying my nerves. So there you go. There you go. Laura? Well, actually, Soul Destroyer Scott is in the UK somewhere. God only knows he's a transplant from Scotland, so just be careful. 
There you go. Mm -hmm. See, nice reciprocity. Yeah. Well, Brings up that. The boys are going to each other. We should put them in their own little room. <laughs> no, but I love, uh, I, I think that we do need to, to, and, and some people, when I do my Facebook Live, some people say, they go, well, here she goes again, unicorns, heart, and butterflies, and rainbows. You know what? I like when my unicorns flirt rainbows and butterflies. Can I get nasty? Oh, heck yes. Um, somebody, you know, sort of in, in, in somebody's, um, <laughs> yep, I can get real nasty. Uh, somebody called me an, a wrinkly old woman the other day, and I laughed. And, you know, <laughs> yes, I do. because all these wrinkles are not wrinkles, they're smile lines. Like a pit bull with lipstick. There you go. That's me. You know, they're smile lines. And I'm proud of my wrinkles. And as for old health, this body might be 56 years old, but the heart and the soul are another age. So, you know what? It doesn't matter what people think of me. What is the most important thing of thing is I have what I think of myself. And quite a few years ago, I didn't have high regard for myself, I have to admit. But, you know, like I said, I came out of that closet. And I got that smack upside the head from spirit, and you know I'm still learning. <laughs> I'm still learning, and I think I will never stop learning. And one day in my learning, hence the butterflies, yes, darling. Um, explain the butterflies to you one day, not in this show, because it's Jody's show. Um, uh, out of your crystal. Well, <laughs> yes, I came. I came out of my crystal. It's as tight as a closet. <laughs> You know, but I think everybody, I lost my brain fart. I had my moment. I lost it. You can't, you can't show me something shiny and then expect me to get back in the same track. That was no good. No guy. You know, the funny thing is that the more we learn, sometimes, and this is ego, there is, by the way, the right use of ego. A lot of times when Agreed. we say something is ego, we mm, have a very negative connotation. That's a different. But somebody put it one time. You can have an ego, and you can work with your ego. But the point is not to live an egotistical lifestyle. Well, see, that's fascinating to me because start seeing how our ego influences us and start looking at and learning about our inner lives. And we become aware of some things and we fix them. And we think we're done. Reality is we're never done. Reality is so long as we are still here on the planet, there is more for us to do. Learn at ever more subtle level but ego and the in the negative sense of I guess for me one of the easiest ways to define ego is that that negative sense of ego and I put I need I want ahead of goal. I lose my perspective as a an individuated bit, individuated piece of the whole. And I focus on what, what, what I want. Always an I with a small letter. Um, yeah, uh, Fellini in the chat room said, ego pro helps protect you. Uh, you are the most important person to your ego and should be, as it too, which is true. And also, we our egos change over time um, for different reasons. For example, uh, when we're young and hanging out in the clubs, you fix your hair and your makeup because you want to look attractive to the to to attract a mate or to attract you know whatever attention it is you want. Um, now I put my hair and my makeup on so I don't scare the crap out of people. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'll go change. <laughs> I, want to, I want to go back to that sentence. Ego helps protect you. Um, and my my instinctive response is to 
is from what? What is it that we think we need to be protected? I would venture to say, the more we do this work, the more there is nothing we need to protect ourselves from. We are who we are, and we learn each each step. Okay, is this better? So, can you hear me better now? Uh, Soul hasn't been here from the beginning, so we've had a few sound issues. But yeah, just hang tight. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to lean back forward. Unfortunately, you guys are getting a close-up of every line on my face. Because I every smile line. Microphone. We're like <laughs> I don't care. The point is for me, and you know, that doesn't make me right. It makes me right for me. For me, there is nothing actually that I need to be protected from. I don't need to be protected from me. That's my ego talking, my self-protection stuff. If I stand back from that, if I mess up, I make a mistake, I hurt somebody's feel, whatever it is, that's another learning for me. I don't want to be protected from that. I want to grow through that. I don't need to be protected from other people's energy. I, for me, I only need protection if I am not, what I say this, if I'm vulnerable to the winds of public opinion, whether that public be one person in a chat room or a group of people, when I am vulnerable to that, when that becomes more important than what I know about me and what spirit brings to me, I don't want to be protected from it. I want to take that learning and evolve. Oh. Yeah, but also we have to remember, Joey, is that you've had a few years to, to figure this out, you know. Um, some people still figuring it out, you know, because you've been lucky enough, and I do consider it lucky, to have had the, the amount of time with, with Michael and with your other uh, guides to understand. I I know I have my guides. I mean, I have dreams of them sometimes, so I'll know that they're there, but I don't, you know, I get I get feelings. I get, you know, and it's, it's all, because it's been the past five years for me. You've been doing a little bit longer than five years. So you understand your ego. You understand that you're not with everybody. And for me, I used to give a hoo-ha, like I said, I used to give a hoo-ha about what people thought about me. So now I could just, if I put on makeup, it's because I want to do it. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's for me. But it took me a while to, you know, it took me 50 years to figure that shit out. <laughs> Oops, sorry, cuz. Money in the corner jar. And somebody says, says to me, pretty frequently, a friend I talk with a lot, and she says to me all the time, kids are being born fully wired. And I say, no, I don't think so. I think kids are being born into an environment that is far more open than it used to be, and they're not being shut down. Mm-hmm. So what that means for me in terms of this discussion, this thread of our discussion, we can, yeah, I'm going to say it like I think it. We can hide behind the fact that we haven't been doing this for a long time. And I say baloney because we are each where we are in our own evolution. You all have areas where you have grown way beyond where I am, and vice versa. But when you bring to my awareness who you are, an area that I can grow in, I don't want to be protected from that. I just want to grow. 
there is, it's not a linear step-by-step process. It's a historic, it's a whole. And we are where we are within that in various ways. Now, protection at the start is a useful ritual to get us into the right frame of mind. Scott, that may be true. For me, I would say, yeah. what we need to get into the right frame of mind is the ability to connect with spirit, to recognize, I want to say more about spirit, recognize all the ways that spirit is connecting with us constantly. That is what we need. That and our intention, and there's different kinds of spirit. And we use the word pretty loosely. Spirit can be our friends and family who are past. Spirit can be our guides, the angelic presences. Spirit can be our higher self. Spirit is also much larger constellation than that. We are hearing more and more now about galactics and the connections that people are having with the galactic nations, galactic planets. Spirit is that undefinable reality that exists when we are in physical form when we're not in physical form, it's huge. The multiverse, it exists at the quantum level, where past and present and future all exist side by side. I do a lot of dream work, and one of the things that I'm learning over and over again is that because the quantum reality is real, what we have in our three-dimensional world called the past, in our dreams, frequently, people from our past come and ask for our help. Not something that we have to cure in us. It's often that we can bring something back to our past to heal something back then. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> yeah, evergreen places on the spiral. Absolutely. Um, spirit is so much vaster. We are not even in kindergarten in terms of our levels of comprehension about what spirit really is. Which is fine, because we understand what we understand. Whatever that is, wherever that is, it isn't the linear, you go to kindergarten, you go to first grade, you go to... It doesn't work that way. It passes into bond. Thank you, soul. <laughs> <laughs> He's so generous, isn't he? He just likes to yeah. share. Welcome, Welcome back, Fellini. <laughs> so... We, from my perspective, we absolutely have to give up this understanding of things in a linear, logical, sequential. I talk often about three different languages. First language we learn is speech, person to person communication, it is logical, it is sequential, it is time based. Mm -hmm. It is mental, and it's enormously useful. There are limitations to it that we are, as we evolve, we begin to understand. That leads us to the second language, language of the heart. It's the language that allows us to be unsung heroes. It is not logical. It is not linear. It is not sequential. 
is not based in time, and it is not from our mind. It's our intuition. It is our our getting something in a flash of insight. That's from the heart. It's where we communicate when we um, sit at the seaside and are overwhelmed with the beauty of the ocean in terms of the seagull. We share a glance with another person. It was exactly language of the heart in a supermarket in a small town in New Mexico where there was a Native American woman and a Hispanic woman and me and the Native American woman child was being horrible, yelling and screaming and grabbing at things. All three of us shared a look that said, oh my God, I've been there, I know what this is. Transcended time and place. That's heart. And we become adept, hope we become adept, being able to speak that. Third language, we are really just beginning to speak. And that spirit. Spirit language is one of the hallmarks here that there is no more balance, there is no more duality, there is simply an open ended, evolving. Where we are able to comprehend more than one thing at a time, to the flesh. You go to the symphony, you hear the whole symphony, and it's just gorgeous, and it kind of sweeps you away, and that's wonderful. Or you can tune in and focus just on the violin. And when you focus on the violin, the rest of the symphony sort of falls quiet in your ear. Spirit's language is when you can do both at the same time. Spirit language is when you hear violins at the same time that you hear their place in the whole symphony. Spirit language is when Somebody harms somebody you love, and you're angry, and you're upset, and you never, in that moment, lose track of the fact that there is also cool in this, that this person is an embodiment of love. They exist side by side. They're like, I was going to say wolf and bold, but they're not. It's side by side. Thinking, I don't know if I'm saying this clearly or not. Yes, yeah, it is. Our ability to talk spirit language is, it is an evolutionary step for humans. In 2011, 2012, when we became aware of the shift that was happening in energetically on the planet, <clears throat> One of the crucial things that happened that we began to understand baby steps in in understanding that duality no longer existed. Balance is, is a closed closed circle. Balance implies there is a this and a this. And we have to keep them down. When you release yourself from duality, you realize that it's an open, evolving. It isn't just good. There are no such things as good and evil as polar opposites from each other. I don't want to get started on my evolved. The point, of course, is that where we talk spirit language, move beyond duality, 
bringing him to an understanding, increasingly growing, of the of the almost infinite complexity of. So, finding ways in which I still tend to think in dualistic terms is incredibly important. Those are the places from language, art language, place of spirit language. Okay, if we'll leave it in the chat room, it, it's in what you perceive being good or bad, and we both and we need both to learn anything. Yeah. Oh, Evergreen Love, thanks for being here. Night, Evergreen. Please. Thank you for showing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. Um, what I'm saying, Feline, is that we learn to not perceive things as good or bad. No, we don't need both. What we need is to move beyond that. Like listening to violins and the whole symphony, there is a place when we are enmeshed in spirit language where the, there is no perception, good and bad, there are um, okay. okay. The word evil for me is a tricky one because when it does, it's like taking a butterfly. Sorry, Darlene. And hitting okay. it with the sword is stuck. The thing is, evil is that way forever. No opportunity for it to be other than that. Instead of evil, I use the word, and I'll type it in the chat room. I will if I can avoid the typos. Here's the word evolve. Too short for evolving or Solution for the evolving of our own beinghood. Every single soul comes here with the expectation, hope that we will use this planetary life to go through what we need to go through to learn what we need to learn. However, Oh, thank you, Soul. Good night, Soul. You may do something. Let me make this as graphic and simple as If you take a hold of my cat, torture, that is going to be hugely upsetting for me. And I'm going to have all sorts of emotional responses to that. Spirit talk, spirit language means that at the very moment that I'm having those feelings toward you for those behaviors, I am simultaneously aware of the picture. I could allow you to do that kind of thing. And at the very same moment that I am horrified, furious at what physical act you have just done, I send you every ounce of love and blessing I possess because I understand. There is a larger perspective being reflected in your behavior. This is a tough one. 
why I use such a graphic example. That ability to speak spirit language holds more than one thought of what we used to call duality. You can't do that if you're looking at it from a dualistic perspective. And you can't do that if you're looking at it only from your heart language. It's with the cat. It's Spirit language, I would never call you evil. It call you evolve. It say your stuff. I hope I try lovingly letting you have the consequences for the choices you make. You can further. That takes. Soul Destroyer came back. He said he missed you. You know what it is? It ups the ante on being unsung angels. Yeah. Because that's Why something else? that. Go ahead. Why else are we here? You're such an ass. <laughs> No, I agree, um, but that's something that takes that takes time and and learning to do because and and I know you can do it, <laughs> Selene. I'll get you into his room. He's crazy. Um, it takes. I'm not there yet, you know. Like no like I say to people. Funny. Oh, I know, but like I say to people, I am. My unicorns fart rainbows and butterflies the longest of time, but I have a line, and and very few people have ever managed to cross it. But those <laughs> those who have have not seen the pretty side of Mama D, you know. And they just kind of like, my God, that's new you. I said, Hey, you crossed the line, you know. So it it's you know for you it was the, the cat story. It's like that's a line you don't cross, you know. But it takes a lot. I will beat the living shit out of somebody. And then I'll send them love and healing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Darlene, it doesn't take time. It doesn't take anything. Because there is no destination. There is no arrival. There's just stuff with it doing it. It takes one thing. That's your own intent. Mm-hmm. Recognizing all the time when our intent wins out and recognizing all the times when our human nature gets in the way and learning from that. The process. We're all in this process. There's no gold star for those who do it faster or whatever because there is no such thing. Uh, yeah. Where we are, the only thing that matters is our intent. That's all. The rest of it unfolds as it unfolds. Some of us have given ourselves incredibly difficult challenges this physical lifetime. Yeah. Others have given ourselves a walk in the park for a lifetime. How can we possibly say that we're more or less evolved than somebody else? Because it's so much more complex than that. All we know is we are each individually doing the very best we can in any given moment. Because if we could do better, we would. I don't even know what better means. Our intent, our commitment to our own. That's all there is. That's it. No, it's. <laughs> Oh, so you read that, darling? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's only his hand I want. I don't want the rest of him. He can kill me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Scott. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah, I, I, I understand what you're saying, and I do get it. And like I said, it's when something angers me, when, and it, it, like I said, it takes a lot for me to get angry. Frustrated is more like the word. Um, <laughs> ooh, there's some words going on in my chat room. You do realize that all this stuff is getting recorded. <laughs> <laughs> tell the world will now know that you proposed marriage to me. Let's not tell my husband, okay? Um, so, uh, um, I do have to take the time to to when I get frustrated, when I get angry, I do. You no, know, half my brain is going, "Come here, let me bitch slap your ass." Excuse my language, and the other half of me is going, "Okay, breathe, darling." Go, throw some bags around, you know, just get it, you know, just calm down type of thing. So I do get it, you know. It's it's, it's not easy in any way, shape, or form. Because, no, but, you know, but I do get it. And and I think a lot of people should learn to do that, you know, even if it does take smoking a blunt. There you go. Um, <laughs> so I was real good at that. But, um, but, it, and but I think you know if each one of us just does it a little bit, then here we go. Rainbows and butterflies. It will be a chain reaction of positivity. Everything. You no, know, Eric. Go back to Eric and Kitty. Eric is always saying, and I love how he phrases this. And I've stolen it and use it all the time. There is no wrong way. Mm-hmm. There's I know that one. Infinite number of ways to do it. So, Darlene's way may not be my way. Relevant. It really doesn't matter. Exactly. If, if for Darlene, that's the way that she grows, she evolves, she moves on. That's perfect. Mm-hmm. Nobody has the right to say to Darlene. No, you're doing it wrong. She's not. She's being a perfect Darlene. And that's all each of us can do, be a perfect who we are. We listen to feedback. We stay open to other people's perceptions. We look to see if there's something in that that we want to take on to grow our own next step. We make it's not one that's on that side, unless we allow that. Yeah. Oh, that's my rant. <laughs> to my ear. No, rant away. This is what the good show is all about. Guaranteed ranting. Well, we're almost close to the end of the show. Does anybody have any questions for Jody? And Soul, no, no questions for me. <laughs> yes. I love you. Can answer any questions too. Oh, good. Go ahead, Soul. Oh. Oh, has a question. Yay. Soul is a new friend, so <laughs> But I think you're such an ass. Okay, you're an ours. Ours. Be good. Thank you, Simon. You're a doll. <laughs> and you know what? I'm going to torture you, Soul. Seriously. No, you're not. So you're not sorry at all. Answer, you're giggling. I'm going to answer Soul's question. Okay, aww. No, don't be sorry. You're cool. Okay, from if I'm talking mental language, I haven't the faintest idea of what the square root of 456 is, but Google is my best friend, and I'll find out. If I'm talking <laughs> heart language, um, I would say soul is either trying to be amusing and speaking, or he is being a pain in the butt, or there are a bunch of different possibilities from a heart language perspective. From a spirit perspective, I'm just glad to have his energy in this room, no matter how it is that it's manifested. Thank you, Sam. So that was maybe a facetious question, but that's a real answer. There you go. And Simon just posted what the square root is, 456. It's 21.3541560. Oh, 56504, whatever the hell it is. 
that's wonderful. Um, All right, more, more questions, facetious, serious, whatever. Oh, <laughs> you can ask me my shoe size. <laughs> And behave, Simon. Uh, sorry, Simon. Well, Simon always behaves. <laughs> size five. He says size five. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Simon. Um, sorry, soul. That's not accurate. Nope. Next load. Blast off. Five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Boom. Well, first off, I'm going to say, because we're getting close to the hour, so the two-hour mark, I'm going to thank everybody who showed up, who's still in the room, Fellini, Scott, Simon, Soul Destroyer, I thank you for sticking around. For those who had to leave, oh, there were so many, Christy Who, Donna, uh, Jason, uh, oh, God, I, there was somebody, Timothy, I don't remember who. I thank you all for coming. Jody, it was a blast. I am so glad. Jesus was not here. Sorry. Um, I hope that we can work the sound out, issues out, so that next time you come back, which you will be coming back, um, I think I'll buy you one of these. Yeah. Of things. Hopefully I'll, I'll download Puffin and it will work for me. Yeah, that should work better as well. Um, and so... At the next time you're on, we're going to have a like, um, very interesting show with you and Michael. Um, oh, good Lord, no. <laughs> have a very interesting show with you, Michael, Eric, and Teddy. And everybody who sends out healing, please send out healing to Eric. Um, he's got um, some kind of allergic reaction, and he's not feeling too good. Um, so, and And... Jody, if you can hang tight for a couple of seconds, I do believe I have. Sure. When we're when we're finished at recording, so just don't go anywhere. Everybody, I will see you all next week. Next week, I have no idea who's on my show next week, but it's going to be fun as it always is. Much love and butterfly kisses to everybody, and I will see you all next week. Thank you, Darlene. Thank you all in the chat room, even you, soul. <laughs> Naughty little boy that he is. <laughs>